Welcome to The Climb! This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. We want you to win. You're going to need some leverage. And uh, that's why we named it The Climb. C-L-I-M-B. It's an acronym that stands for Creating Leverage in the Music Business. Right? Brilliant. See what we did there? Uh, Let me introduce you to my co-host, Mr. Brent Baxter. Brent is an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Annabellum, Joe Nichols, and more. And Brent also helps songwriters like you turn pro by teaching the art, the craft, and the business of songwriting. And you can find Brent at songwritingpro.com. Once again, that's songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. It's an innovative artist development company. They help you find your sound, and they help you find your audience. Not only do they develop and improve your artistry, they also grow and monetize your fan base, creating fingers together like I'm making money. Cash flow. Daredevil has worked with multi-platinum artists like Colin Ray, yeah, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Herndon, and Andy Griggs, just to name a few. You can find Johnny at DaredevilProduction.com. That's production, singular, no S, and we all know why there's no S, because, ladies and gentlemen, there is only one, Johnny Twinell. And we're all thanking the Lord for that, yeah. How are you, brother? <laughs> I'm doing all right, man. Good to be hanging with you. Good to be here. As always. You too, man. Yeah, man. It's uh I'm excited to get into this. We're we're rolling right into the new year. Uh you know, we blasted our November download record in the month of December. And we are on track to completely obliterate the download record of December at this moment. Like almost doubling it, which is insane. So we wanna Thank everybody for, you know, clearly you're sharing, you're downloading, you're listening, you like us. You really like us. You like us. (laughs) And uh, we want to thank you for that. And uh, we want to read a a couple shout outs here that uh, that, that people gave uh, reviews. We want to we want to share that with you guys. So real quick, this is by Trocat. Uh, finally dug in and started listening. So much information that would take years to turn in nice, short, concise shows, each providing amazing information and tips on how to succeed in the songwriting business. Highly recommended for songwriters at all levels. Thank you, Chocat. We appreciate you. Thank you much. And I want to read this uh, five-star review from Chelsea87. It says, when life gives you sparkling lemons. Listening to this podcast is like taking a plunge into a giant bowl of sparkling crushed ice-filled <laughs> lemonade on a melt the lipstick check, chapstick, if you're a dude, off your face kind of day. Well, there you go. Imagery. That's hot. And there we go. It's refreshing, beneficial, and lifts you and your abilities to the top. I actually listen to it during my Tuesday early morning run each week, and it's just a motivation I need to kick my creativity into ludicrous speed. Well, I hope you're running ludicrously right now, Chelsea. I have actually done some one-on-one coaching with the one and only Brent Baxter, no S. And I must say, some of the best hours and freshly pressed pennies I have spent Thanks, Johnny and Brent, for your lovely insight and generous information. Beneficial for songwriters, artists, and anyone looking to skyrocket their career. Highly recommended. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Chelsea. Wow, thank you, Chelsea. And it's fun to hang out. Yeah, and she's she's a good writer. It's fun to hang out and do some of those coaching sessions. Skype is is an awesome thing. Isn't it? (laughs) It is, man. I I, I love it. That's where where we do our consulting sessions. And, um, uh, you know, it's... it's, uh, it's incredible. So, well, hey, man, let's get into it. We got a lot to cover. Uh, the The title of today's episode is mm-hmm. "How to Expand Your Audience Using YouTube Right Now." Now, we've got two a, a two parter that if if you've listened to all the episodes, you've heard that that give like the ten different. Uh, sort of ways for, and by the way, there's construction going on here in my Don't be office scared. building. So this is only a drill. Yeah, yes. that's uh, it's going to be a little bit annoying. And of course, they're using drills and hammers and everything that could possibly be the most annoying sounds during the recording of a podcast. And uh, oh, they're doing I'll it. See if I can get the crying baby in here, late I'll go at wake night. Up Ruby Would you go, can we just step it up a bit? That yeah. way, we can end some cats in heat. We'll and maybe see we'll just we add in like a, a track of Jim Carrey doing the most annoying sound from <laughs> Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, but um, uh, but I, you know, I, what what I want to what I wanted to dig into <laughs> is the strategy of using YouTube. 
uh, YouTube is the most valuable asset that you have right now as an independent artist. It's your gateway to one billion people. That's one billion with a B. Have access to YouTube. And the majority of those people use it for music purposes. It's free, and most of you completely ignoring it. And why are you ignoring it? Why? Why? Because it's foreign, and you're lazy. <laughs> you think it's not you foreign? To sugarcoat that? <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna tell it like it is, man. You think it's not foreign because you're on it every day, and you know how to, and you experience it. But that doesn't mean that you know anything about how to harness the power of YouTube, and that's what I want to talk about today. I mean, I've got a blog article or two on this. We've got a two part episode on the podcast where we dug into the steps that help you potentially build a viral YouTube channel. But but most are just still, you know, Brent, they're sitting around complaining about not being able to find their audience, that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, marketing is their biggest challenge, mm-hmm. and in uh, they can't make a living. And in the same mm-hmm. breath, with their best artistically prideful voice, they tell their friends what they're willing and not willing to do as an artist to maintain their integrity. Oh, integrity. And I, I have integrity in air quotes. Mm-hmm. You know, um, really what it is, is you're trying to maintain the integrity of the story that you're telling yourself right now, which is why you don't have the time or why you don't want to you know, approach YouTube as a, as a marketing tool that it is. And I mean, none of you can deny the sheer numbers of artists, famous or not, that are making a living because they broke on YouTube. You know, mm-hmm. it, you know what that is? Uh, it's either the construction people next door asking if their drills are too loud, or it's reality. It's or it's math. math. It's math. Yeah, math. It's math. You know, um, and and uh, YouTube is where you're going to break. Because listen, on this podcast, if you've listened to these episodes, what do we keep telling you? The music is not going to break you today. It used to break you for decades and decades and decades. That's what came first, but now the artist comes first. And so you have to, if they like you, then they're going to decide to give your music a chance and it better be up to par and it better be compelling. But they're going to like you. One of the best ways you can get them to like you is from YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, and when I say, when I say that they broke, I mean, they found an audience on YouTube and they're making a living. You know, we've talked about Noah Guthrie, right? He, he, Mm -hmm. he, he broke using this exact strategy that we're talking about. He's, He's doing, and he did it from his bedroom, by the way, 17, 18 years old, and he's playing six, 700 seaters, hard ticket sales. And what that means is that he's not opening for anybody. He's not playing festivals or county fairs or anything like that, that he's playing in a theater and people are spending money to go see Noah Guthrie. Okay. That's awesome. Carmen. Mm -hmm. She was on Saturday Night Live. Um, She's, she got a record deal from, from her, her work. And there's money to be made on YouTube if you find that audience and you can be compelling. Do you know the number one YouTube account used to be uh, this Swedish dude named PewDiePie? You wear him? I've heard the name, but I haven't seen it. This guy, I think he just gets like high and plays video games. And, and the, the video <laughs> is he teaches people how to get like from one level to another level in these different video games. Mm -hmm. But there's a little, uh, picture in picture of him making funny comments. Like, and he's like super funny, I guess while he does it, but that dude's making Mm -hmm. like seven figures a year. Wow. He's a, he's a millionaire from YouTube. He just got surpassed by, by a five year old, (laughs) five year old -old that that reviews toys, $1 million a month in revenue. From you. Oh, hold on a second. I got to go wake up Ozzy. We got to get on YouTube. I'll call you back later. All right. So, I mean, it's, it's there and, and why you're not trying to tap into that. I don't know, but, um, here's the secret you got. So what you're saying is a five-year-old can do it. What's your excuse? Exactly. Right now that five-year-old okay. is extremely adorable and, oh, I bet. but, but, but uh, it, you know, music wise, here's how, you, here's how you, here's how you put this strategy together. Okay. So you have to remove your artist hat and you have to put on a marketing hat for a second. You got to play the role of a record executive and you just signed yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And so what I want to get into in this, in, in this episode is the most common conceptual mistake that just about all artists make when they're thinking about YouTube. 
And because mm-hmm. why do I hear it? Because I hear it from every single artist that's that's a daredevil artist. You know, mm-hmm. it's a huge behavior modification. That's the that's the hardest part of it. Um, but I promise you this, you guys, that there's artistic satisfaction in a solid YouTube marketing strategy, but it's not where you think it is. Okay, you're gonna find joy. You're gonna find pleasure. You're going to be. You're going to have a good time. It's just not the way you think it's going to happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, so it's different than the story that you're telling yourself. And this is what we're going to tackle. Um, and by the way, it, you know, if your artist's integrity, as you define it, is the very thing that's keeping you from expanding your audience, mm-hmm. shouldn't you rethink that? <laughs> <laughs> Most artists want to put up um, videos of either their original material or mm-hmm. cover songs that mean something to them from artists that they respect, right? Mm-hmm. Right, the songs that got them into writing and singing and yeah, play, that kind yeah, of stuff. Exactly, and they, you know, and they and and and, and they want to dig into that. It's got to be something that they like, okay? Mm-hmm. And this is where they think the artistic satisfaction comes from. Like, if I was going to do a record and I was going to have a cover on my record. What cover would that be, right? They're approaching it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a flawed approach, and it's also self-centered. You're thinking about you. Mm -hmm. Ah, you're thinking about the audience. Right. And what's the one thing that we're always talking about when it comes to social media, right? The content. The content. It's not about you. It's about the audience. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, if you put up videos of your original material, but no one in the marketplace is aware of you as an artist, you get zero views from new possible fans, just views from what? Who's watching your video? People that already know you. Yeah. What good does that do? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and how did this help you sort of spread your gospel, so to speak? How did this help you get some new followers? It didn't. Uh, so you have talent. And uh, when you put up views, videos of you covering your favorite iconic songs of, of artists that you respect, that you love, but what happens? I mean, it, it, again, who's watching those videos? Same I people. mean, not as many people are searching for like back catalog classics. Exactly. I would imagine. Exactly. YouTube has the one place where you can get a boatload of digital foot traffic. Mm -hmm. People that are looking for one thing and they stumble across you and click on it. And then it's up to you to kill them in the first, you know, 10 seconds. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then they're going to, they're going to hang out. Now, you know, some of you are really marketable, right? Some of you have the most beautiful faces on the planet. You know, Noah Guthrie, by the way, uh, his biggie video, 24 million, which which wasn't a one-off. It was like 77 weeks of work, okay? Mm-hmm. But, uh, I, mean, I mean, he's not unfortunate looking, but he's not going to be modeling underwear for Calvin Klein. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, but when he opens his mouth and sings, mm-hmm. oh, it's astounding. His vocal tone and his, his talent is just undeniable. And it mm-hmm. all goes away, you know? And you listen. So... Uh, your current story, whatever you've been telling yourself, is flawed. Neither of these tactics work. Putting up your original songs and and putting up songs of artists, uh, you know, old crusty songs from artists that you love because Mm -hmm. they don't create traffic in any real way. They don't. There's no new business happening, so you're not finding any new audiences, right? Well, that, and you're going to be most likely buried under years and years of other versions of that song of the original artist doing that song, you know, they're not going to find yours way, way down the list. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense on so many levels. So when, mm-hmm. when you approach YouTube, you've got to think about it like a marketer and you want to be exposed to as many new people as humanly possible before you extend your audience. Right. So that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So where do you find the new people? How do you drive traffic to your video? The answer is current cover songs. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes, <clears throat> you know, newly released songs can be beneficial to you because they drive traffic from well-known artist videos. And sometimes they're beneficial because maybe the artists aren't so well known, but they have, but there's little competition, right? Mm-hmm. Taylor Swift, um, 
she'll have almost a billion views on any video she puts up on YouTube. And when we would do Taylor Swift covers with Bailey James, for instance, uh, we'd maybe get like three to 5,000 views. Uh, mm-hmm. Which, by the way, is blows away just anybody listening to this podcast right now probably blows away any video you got on YouTube right now, views wise. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we've got videos from Bailey with 100,000 views, with 50,000 views, a handful with 20 plus thousand views, and a mm-hmm. whole boatload with 10, 15 plus thousand views. So, the, but, and by far the most popular original artist videos would be Taylor Swift, though, you know, but it's, it's a, there's a million little girls doing those covers, kind of like what you said about if you do like an old song, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you have an obscure artist that's getting really popular on YouTube, uh, you can really capitalize on that and get in front of a bunch of people. It's kind of like opening for the artist, right? In Mm -hmm. a way, like in a weird way. But uh, they're they're looking for that other artist, like they're looking to buy a ticket to go see the headliner and then they stumble across you and they're like, oh wow, look at this, right? It's it's a weird metaphor, but it works. So um, here's a little spoiler alert. Uh, the cathartic artistic satisfaction comes from putting your stamp on another artist's original song. So stop thinking about whether or not you like the music and whether Mm -hmm. or not the music is in your genre and start looking at the Billboard Hot 100 and look for videos that are less than 15 weeks on the charts. Mm -hmm. Newer stuff. Yeah, they're starting to heat up, right? The younger they are, like, you know, one, two weeks on the charts, the smarter you, and you want them going up the charts, not coming down the charts, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, if you do that, then what? Here's, here's, here's what will blow your mind. The farther away the original artist is from what you're doing, from your artistic lane, the more compelling it'll be. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, now some artists here, right off the bat, I can hear their eyes rolling like, I don't want to be a cover artist. I don't want to be known as a cover artist. And they think somehow it cheapens them. Right. So let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> let's, let's do. First Beatles record wasn't released. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, uh, it didn't have I Want to Hold Your Hand on it. That was the second Beatles record. First Beatles record, mm-hmm. all cover songs, blue songs. First two Rolling Stones records. All covers. All, All covers. Stuff. Not one freaking original on the first two. If you get that, like, that big box set with like every song they ever recorded, first two mm-hmm. records, nothing but covers. So this is not new. <laughs> mm-hmm. <All right. laughs> Even in the old industry back in the 60s when you used to be able to write a song on Monday in the Bro building, get it recorded on Wednesday and it would be on the air on Friday, uh, pe- artists were still doing cover songs. Mm-hmm. It's, the, it's the best way to showcase your talent because what, what does a cover offer a consumer, Brent? Familiarity. Boom. Now, if you're familiar with the song... And then you're doing something totally whack, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like I tell my artist this, I say, here's a list of songs. You got to choose from this list of songs every week to do your, to do your cover on. But what you do with it, I don't care. Go to town. Do whatever you want to do. Whatever you do. Yeah, you do you. So, you know, there's a huge hit that the, um, the Gords had. They're a, uh, I think they're from Colorado. Don't quote me on that. But they're a, they're a bluegrass band. Mm-hmm. Now, one would think, what the heck would a bluegrass band, and all organic, right? Bluegrass music on top of the beat, right? Like, you know, mm-hmm. up, up tempo. What would a bluegrass band be thinking about covering a rap song from Snoop Dogg? <laughs> Right. Does that sound like the farthest possible galaxy away? I mean, of all the genres they could have picked to do a cover song, that would be the last, right? Right. Yes. Because it's a rap. So mm-hmm. they took a whole bunch of artistic license. They did what they did was uh, gin and juice. You ever hear that? Yeah, I think it's been a while, but yeah. I mean, it's with a mandolin, right? So, mm-hmm. so first of all, just think about the feel of it, right? Like Dr. Dre lives like way behind the beat, right? Snoop Dogg mm-hmm. went his rap, the way he raps, way behind the beat, right? Bluegrass mm-hmm. on top of the beat. So right off the bat, by them turning Gin and Juice into a bluegrass song, they, they changed the feel. They're right on top of it, right? Yeah. With a mandolin. Secondly is 
Yes, there's a melody in the hook, right? Rolling down the street, smoking and no, sipping on gin and juice, laid back with my mind on my money and my money on my mind. But mm-hmm. all the rest of it is Snoop Dogg rapping, but they yeah. put a melody to the rap. Nice. So if you go and listen to that and see what they did, it was it was so interesting that 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 video blew up for them on YouTube. It was like seven years ago. Mm-hmm. But it was incredible because it was so darn different. Now, do you think those guys, I mean, maybe they're Snoop Dogg fans. I don't know. But it was genius, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have another, I have an example of something similar. Um, and of course, this started with the big pop and it's, it's an older song. But uh, Adam, Adam Lambert, when he was on American Idol, yeah. his kind of, I think, big moment was when he covered Johnny Cash Ring of Fire. Oh, yeah. And... You know, that was so out there, so different from Cash. It was not Adam's genre, but he really turned it on its head and made it weird and cool. And I think if I'd just been watching that and it had been some song I didn't know, I'd just be like, that's kind of weird. Not really my thing. Check out. But I'm like, that's freaking Ring of Fire. Yeah. You know, so he has me hooked. I'm like, I want to see what he's going to do with this. So it was weird, but it was compelling. Because I was familiar with it, but he made it new. And even if it wasn't quite the thing, you know, the version I'd usually listen to, I want to see what he's going to do with it. It's right? definitely watchable, definitely compelling. Here's here's something else. You know, it, it, it's actually, you just made me think of this. I didn't even think about this. But why is it that just about everybody listening to this podcast who's an indie artist is thinking to themselves, well, I would never do covers on YouTube because I don't want to be thought of as a cover artist. But they would give their right arm to get on American Idol. Or the voice. <laughs> right. And what are you doing That's, there? Hmm. Sing, are you singing sing originals? Co- no. No. You're doing cover songs. <laughs> right. They, <laughs> Carrie Underwood, just, do you think of her as a cover artist? No. But no. What, how do we first become aware of her? Doing cover, cover song. songs. How about Justin Bieber? We think of him as a cover artist? No. Nope. But he got a record deal with 60 million views on YouTube. Doing what? Cover songs. Cover songs. Uh, how about... Um, how about um well i got a buddy james Dupre. oh that, yeah this is a good story you, you know he was in his bedroom in bio chico louisiana doing cover songs him and his skinny arms and his big voice and just you know singing into the youtube doing cover songs you know week after week and just great singing after great singing and eventually uh, ellen degeneres plucked him off of youtube put him on her show and he's on the Ellen Show doing a cover song. I think he did 3 a.m. Matchbox 20. While he's back he backstage, he meets some people from Warner Brothers Records, starts a conversation, he ends up on Warner Brothers Records, ends up on The Voice, turning around four chairs, doing a Hootie and the Blowfish cover song. Uh-huh. There you go. Love it, man. You know, and it's about doing your thing with it, right? Like, mm, there yeah. was this artist on The Voice that did... Um, she did Cheap Tricks, uh, I Want You to Want Me, right? Mm. And mm-hmm. the Cheap Trick version, right? I want you to want me, I need you, need a ba, ba, da, da, da. She turns it into a slow country crooning ballad. Cool. Just wholly turns it on its ear. You know, I want you to want me. And it was genius, right? Mm-hmm. So good. And so, you know, guys, I want you to think about... Um, all you got to do is pick the songs that are going to generate traffic and start digging in. If you commit to doing eight videos, I promise you the first couple videos are going to be the worst. They're going to take the most time. It's going to be the most foreign, the most uncomfortable. And as an intelligent human being, you're going to be immediately starting to process and do the math on the ROI, right? Like this this song took me way too long to work up, took me way too long to record, way too long to upload to YouTube, and all these hassles and uh it, there's no way I can do this every single week because you have to be consistent with it every single week. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But I promise you, if you do eight, the seventh and the eighth one are going to take probably 10 to 15 percent of the time of the first two or three. Mm -hmm. So so you just have to get into that groove when you start to learn how to upload them. And uh, and and you also get into the artistic routine of putting your stamp on you start thinking about it you're like what can I do to this song how can I mess this song up and turn this into what I do mm-hmm. uh, you know maybe that's with uh, um, 
you and an acoustic guitar. Maybe it's with you and a piano. Maybe uh, you sing to a track, but um, your voice is just so stylistic that you're going to change it. You know, um, I think th- this is this is this is gold, people. You can make a bunch of money doing this. And and by the way, you had mentioned James Dupree, uh, mm. Bailey, who's done the most videos so far of all my artists. Has we've been approached. We have been, they have reached out to us two times for, on The Voice. We've gotten mm-hmm. uh, contacted by producers. One time from America's Got Talent, and most recently, a new show that uh, she's still in the running for. We haven't heard if she's been cast or not cast on a show that's going to be called C- The Country Game, uh, which is a mimicking uh, a spinoff of a huge hit show called The Rap Game. They reached out to us. Why? Because she was on YouTube and she's got a ton of views. They reached out because they could find her. They knew she existed. And there's another way. I mean, this, like, why, why aren't we doing this, right? Why aren't more artists doing this? So, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you'll start to get a sense of which ones you should cover, too. Just after you do it for a while, you start to get a sense of which ones are going to be really popular, but also really competitive. And there'll mm-hmm. be, so, like, for instance, Bailey did, Bailey's biggest video is um, Girl Crush, and little big town yeah little big town but we did it right when that song came out and if you remember there was a lot of controversy around that song and Mm -hmm. it was was bobby bones that that i think was really instrumental in breaking that because he kept playing the song on his show saying this is ridiculous this should be a single this is the best song that's on the record and Mm -hmm. and everybody thought it was about you know gay lesbian love but it wasn't right. it was it was a, it was a, it was like a, a love song like it was almost about obsession right from, they just used the whole gay thing for heat <laughs> exactly so, in a way it was yeah. i mean it was genius right but i got a girl crush and and she's you know desperately wanting to be the girl that's with the guy that she's really in love with and so but so i mean there wasn't a whole lot of mamas that were going to let their little girl sing that song like go sing another Taylor Swift song, honey. This one we don't want to put up on YouTube, but we did it. 110,000 views now, Mm -hmm. you know? So it works like a champ. And um, I think that, you know, when when you get a, when you get a, you got to, you got to do it consistently, as we said in those other two episodes, and don't overthink it. Don't, you don't, you you, you all worry about how the video is going to look. Man, just one shot, put your phone, iPhone, on a, a stand, on a on a tripod, press record and sing the song. If you've got a little, if you, if you got a garage band on your computer, or if you got some kind of uh, you know Pro Tools rig or something like that, and you can sing into a microphone and just put a little compression on there and a little EQ, that's even better. Okay, uh, and and that works really well. And and just and just do it every single week and watch what happens. You know, by the way, that's what uh, Noah did. Was he saying mm-hmm. he recorded it, and then and then he you know he he, he recorded it live. It's him and guitar singing, uh, just a acoustic vocal. But uh, he put a little. You can hear there's reverb on there, a little compression, little little EQ, and his voice sounds freaking amazing, man. And and mm-hmm. and on the seventy seventh one, he got twenty four million views. Uh, so it's seventy seven weeks of work of covers that he did, and trying to figure out how to how to make it his own and he did LMFAO sexy and I know it and somewhere around 4 million he put up an Indiegogo campaign and around 14 million it was funded $100,000 for his first record and it stopped it didn't nice. stop until 24 million so uh you know the other thing is is um that you worry about uh there's too many people get hung up on the licensing they're thinking well mm-hmm. I mean just guys YouTube takes care of all that Okay, there's a button in the back end, YouTube licensing. It'll find the writers and make sure they get paid. All the advertising money will go to them. Uh, YouTube does this because they make they want to encourage people to do this kind of stuff. Okay, and by the way, just use your common sense. I mean, there's a million girls singing freaking Taylor Swift songs. Like, are they mm. all getting sued by Taylor? No. <laughs> so, all right. 
All right. So, so uh, you know, understand how YouTube makes money. They make money with uh, with advertising. So they have algorithms that are out there, and they're constantly looking for something that's going to heat up, that they think is going to is going to catch fire. And when it reaches a certain amount of views within a certain amount of time of it originally being posted, they hit a multiplier button because they want more people to be exposed to that video. So they'll share it and freak out, and uh, because it means more advertising dollars, right? And then mm-hmm. and then if it rings another bell they hit another multiplier and if it rings another bell they hit another multiplier and so on and so on and that's when so you know hundred thousand two hundred thousand a million two million ten million hundred million in terms of carmen like guys a radio spin you know a bunch of radio spins in in new york city is is not going to get you 24 million very fast right right on the drive at five in one genre okay but you could do it in from your house and not pay any money for it. So there's no extent. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. This is this is what we do at Daredevil with uh, and it's a killer way to find a new audience and to get new people on board. So, um, you know, pe- pepper in an original video or two when you come out with that stuff, you can have more people that are going to care about it. Uh, and that's just a fact. And, and uh, you know, get them to subscribe, put the end cards on YouTube there so that they can subscribe. They can click on another video. If you're smart and you're con- collecting contact data, you got a squeeze page, they can get a free download mm-hmm. if they want something. And we've got, I mean, thousands of downloads from, from Bailey with this, um, and which means we got thousands of email addresses with this type of um, strategy. So uh, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be doing it, right? Amen. Amen. And if you want to find out some more about that, you just need to check out our episode on uh, how to create a viral YouTube video or YouTube channel. And I believe it's episodes 10 and let's see. Oh, 16 and 14. 16 and 14, yeah. Episodes 16 and 14. 14 first, then 16. And we, we take and you through the we, steps. Yeah, yeah, how to do it. This is more like 30,000. This is why you need to be doing it. This is how you can do it. And the other two episodes are more the nuts and bolts. So go check those out. Yeah, and just, just start covering stuff that's going to be blowing up on the radio and watch okay. people come flock into your channel. So mm-hmm. that brings us to the end of another awesome the climb podcast and i got something new i want to i want to throw people on to here um, we have a uh, um a product it's a it's a it's over six and a half hours of over the shoulder training on the tools that we use and the strategies that we use for twitter instagram youtube and facebook and it's 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 a uh it's all you can access everything with like a free video that kind of breaks down the way that the reason why my business is thriving. Okay. This is what we're doing mm-hmm. for our artists. I'm sharing it with you. The, the initial video is free, just complete transparency. It sets up a product. We give you a good deal on it. It's totally affordable, but you'll have lifetime access to all this information. So you can find out exactly what we're doing with the current tools that we're using. And if you go to how to market uh, your music.com, that is uh, the free video that I'll set up uh, everything that you need to know and, and kind of break down. If it makes sense to you, you can take the next step. But it is a, a great, it's, a, it's a, about a one hour video, completely free. And we just go back and forth and sort of break down exactly the, the structure of how we're building our artists' careers at Daredevil and why it's working. Awesome. That sounds great. All right, guys. Well, with that, we'll say, uh, listen, man, we want you to win. So you guys keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top. 